tutorial so we'll continue our discussion related to fluid mechanics so far in the previous videos we focused our you know attention on uh, fluids at rest that is hydrostatics but in the next series of videos we'll be focusing on uh, the movement or the motion of fluids that is fluids in motion which is hydro dynamics so we know that uh, study of fluids is uh, divided into two categories hydrostatics fluids at rest and hydrodynamics fluids in motion so when it comes to hydrodynamics one of the most important properties associated with movement of fluids is the friction between fluid layers or layers of fluid okay which produces a kind of a frictional force opposing a uh, movement of fluids that is called as viscosity so we'll be discussing that in detail so before we go deep into this just to review uh, some quick uh, uh, concepts study of fluids as we know it's divided into two categories hydrostatics and hydrodynamics hydrostatics deals with the study of the properties of fluids at rest hydrodynamics deals with the study of fluids in motion fluids can be divided into many categories but the two most important categories are ideal fluid and real fluid okay ideal fluid is one which is incompre incompressible and has no viscosity or uh, the stress the shear stress acting on an ideal fluid the viscous uh, force acting on a fluid is zero whereas real fluid is one which possesses viscosity and has finite uh, viscous uh, shear force acting on it ideal fluid is very difficult to find it is imaginary and does not exist real fluid almost all the fluids that will deal are real fluids now coming to the topic of discussion which is fluid friction now we know we are uh, acquainted with uh, solid friction that is when one solid object moves over another solid object and they are both solid surface you know they move uh, over each other their relative motion is opposed because of the friction between the two surfaces and it depends upon how rough or how smooth the two surfaces are and that is called as solid friction okay but in case of fluids the situation is similar okay so the general uh, nature of uh, fluids when it is flowing okay is that they move in in form of layers okay one layer above the other okay they move in the form of layers each layer has a certain velocity okay and it is this movement of layers which produces the fluid friction okay one layer or the relative motion between the two layers because of their different velocities produces fluid friction and this fluid friction is called as viscosity and uh, we are familiar with the concept of uh, intermolecular forces and uh, the basic reason because of uh, which fluid friction comes into play is because of force of cohesion and the various kinds of interaction between fluid particles intermolecular interaction so cohesion is basically the force of attraction between molecules of the same substance it can be solid or liquid we can we have discussed it in detail so here because of the intermolecular force of attraction between the fluid molecules force of cohesion comes into play and that force of cohesion gives rise to viscosity so in short we can understand that viscosity is 
friction in fluids okay and that is it opposes movement of fluid layers and generally the movement of fluids is in the form of layers one layer above the other and their velocities are different and they are uh, less by a specific margin okay so we'll discuss it in detail so what is the value of this uh, fluid friction force okay is there any law which governs this fluid friction force so that we'll try to understand so for now let us just focus our attention on these two layers the top two layers okay which are one above the other the top layer okay or the top layer of the fluid let's say it is moving with a velocity v okay and the layer just below it that has a velocity v plus dv slightly high by margin dv velocity is slightly higher by margin dv the gap between these two layers is dx so here two important uh, factors come into play when it comes to the uh, fluid friction force or the viscosity force first is the velocity gradient okay velocity gradient which is basically the velocity difference between the two layers dv the bottom layer or the layer just below it is slightly higher the velocity is by factor or margin dv and the separation between them is dx so this ratio dv by dx is called as velocity gradient the next important factor here is the area of each fluid layer okay so the layers just uh, one above the other it has a certain area surface area so let's say that area is a so here another important factor is the area of each fluid layer so let's call it a it is the same we are assuming that it is same so here these two important factors contribute to the fluid friction force how so here the fluid friction force is directly proportional to the area of each layer of fluid and it is also directly proportional to the velocity gradient that is the ratio of the velocity difference between the two layers and the separation between the two layers the gap dv by dx so when we combine these two we get this equation the fluid friction force f is equal to minus eta a dv by dx okay so here eta is the constant of proportionality which is called as the coefficient of viscosity and here the negative sign because it is it acts in the opposite direction to the movement of the fluids it acts in the opposite direction the fluid friction force acts in the opposite direction thereby opposing the movement of the fluid layers see the fluid friction force acts in the opposite direction and that's why the negative sign comes into play okay so this is the expression of fluid friction force so if you want to determine the value of this eta the coefficient of viscosity we can neglect the negative sign and we can bring a dv by dx to the left hand side so we can calculate the value of coefficient of viscosity eta as f by a dv by dx okay so here coefficient of viscosity is eta is equal to f by a dv by dx so here the unit of viscosity is newton per meter square into second or it is also called as decapoise or pascal second so if you try to figure it out here 
unit of force is Newton unit of area let's say we are taking mks so it is meter square and here it is velocity meter per second by this distance is meter so here second goes to the numerator and it is uh, mm gets cancelled so it is simply newton second by meter square okay so this so uh, pascal second uh, because newton per meter square that is pascal and when it is multiplied with second it becomes pascal second okay so this is the coefficient of viscosity eta now this is the uh, this is the equation that governs the value of fluid friction force so as you can see it is dependent on the relative motion of the fluid layers the velocity difference and the gap between the layers and also the cross sectional area of the fluid layers so let us now try to understand uh, some of the difference between fluid friction and solid friction and also the similarities between them okay basic comparison so we know solid friction it arises when one solid object moves over another here the fluid friction it comes into play or viscosity it comes into play when one fluid layer moves over another fluid layer so the basic principle is the same the similarities between them they are both come into play whenever there is a movement relative motion between them one moves over the other and the nature of both solid friction and fluid friction it opposes the movement between the two objects in case of solid friction and here between the two fluid layers in case of fluid friction or viscosity both fluid friction and solid friction they oppose the movement of the uh, the objects or the fluid layers okay they oppose the movement next they arise from intermolecular forces yes in case of fluids it is because of the force of cohesion and the intermolecular interaction between the fluid molecules okay then they are dependent on the nature okay there are other factors also this is just uh, the basic uh, you know we have we have simplified this whole thing into this but there are other factors also which uh, affect uh, the viscosity which uh, the chemical composition and other things so we are not going into that otherwise it will create confusion so these are the similarities between solid friction and fluid friction so the differences between them is that fluid friction it depends on the contact area okay contact area or the surface area which comes in contact with the fluid layer which is a but solid friction is independent of that okay then uh, it is also dependent on the velocity gradient between the two layers but solid friction is independent of the area of contact and the relative velocity or the velocity gradient second point is that viscosity of a liquid or the fluid friction it decreases with increase in temperature so as the temperature increases the fluid friction value it starts decreasing but solid friction that is independent of temperature okay this is the second point then in case of solid friction of course heat is generated at the interface or the point of contact between the two objects but in case of fluids heat is generated but it is within the fluid and not at the interface of the point of contact of the fluid layers or the in case of solid uh, and fluid so these are some of the similarities and differences between fluid friction and solid friction next is why viscosity this property is important so there are a lot of uh, practical applications of this property uh, of viscosity which are very important first of all uh, an important application of this property is in medical instrumentation or uh, for diagnosis purposes 
so the viscosity of blood it depends on the concentration of rbcs red blood corpuscles so by detecting the viscosity of blood by testing the viscosity of blood we can check whether rbcs there is any deficiency of that okay so viscosity is an indicator of rbc deficiency okay so you know uh, by checking the viscosity that parameter we can uh, see if there is any deficiency of rbc in the blood then the circulation of blood through arteries it depends on the viscosity of blood and for mechanical purposes in case of mechanical instruments uh, for damping purposes to provide the damping torque the restoring torque viscosity of air or liquid is used okay so the air or liquid which is used in that instrument viscosity the viscosity of air or the particular liquid that is used that is that provides the damping torque so it is very important then oil which is used as a lubricant it should also have a proper value of viscosity it has a certain value threshold value and uh, also the oil which is used for applying brakes in vehicles it should have a proper viscosity value so these are some of the some of the uh, practical examples of application of viscosity there are many more these are just to list a few okay so here we have discussed about uh, the property of viscosity in fluids in case of fluids in motion then we discussed what is the value of the viscous force of the uh, fluid friction force or viscous force it is also called as another important thing the fluid friction force is also called as viscous drag force why because uh, we know that the fluid friction force it always acts opposite to the relative motion or the velocity between the fluid layers so it kind of drags uh the fluid layer in the opposite direction that's why it is also called as the fluid friction force is also called as viscous drag force or viscosity for force or viscous drag force it can also be called as fluid friction force so don't confuse between the three viscous force vis uh, viscous drag force or fluid friction force okay so we discussed about uh, the viscous drag force or viscosity force uh, we determined the equation which governs the viscosity force and some of the important comparisons between fluid friction and solid friction and also the application practical applications of viscosity some of the important applications so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much